Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and it is Friday, not Thursday. You you probably know that being, you know, intelligent people who look at your calendar or your phone or whatever it is that tells you what day it is. Yeah, I know. I normally post an episode on Thursday. I I had a sinus infection this week and I finally went to the doctor and got some antibiotics and I'm starting to feel better, but I've been a little blah for a, a while now. So missed yesterday and am catching up today. So I apologize for my lateness, but trying to get back on track. Um, Anyway, we are here to talk about books, not my sinuses, which are very persnickety, but uh, books are sometimes persnickety and sometimes awesome and sometimes both at once. Um, But today I want to talk about Newberry Metal books because recently I can't even remember what I was talking about, if I was talking about it here on the podcast or if I was talking to a friend or my husband or my parents or, you know, I I talk to books, talk about books a lot (laughs) Uh, and to a lot of people. But I was thinking about books that I read when I was younger. And one of the books that came to mind was The Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell, which happens to be a Newbery Metal book. And it got me thinking, what other new Newberry Metal Books did I read? Um, Before we go into the list of some of those books, I do want to tell you, in case for some reason you're not familiar with the Newberry Metal, um, it was named for 18th century British bookseller John Newberry, and it is awarded annually by the Association for Library Service to Children, a division of the American Library Association, to the author of the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children. So there is uh, a winner every year. There has been a winner since 1922. Um, So that's almost 100 years. That's almost 100 books. In addition to Newbery Medal books, there are also Newbery Honor books, the ones that I guess you could call them the runners up, the the ones that don't get the medal but um, are still honored each year um, as being outstanding outstanding contributions to children's literature. Now, as a a librarian, my father uh, often steered me in directions for books to read and um, suggestions when I was a kid. And I'm pretty sure that he is, he either directed me to the Island of the Blue Dolphins or he directed me to the Newberry Medal books and said, these are all really good you should read some of them. And maybe I chose Island of the Blue Dolphins on my own. Not really sure how that went down, but I remember reading it. And um, I actually just checked it out of the library last weekend and reread it because I keep saying that when I talk about books that I read as a child, you know, I read it and I sort of remember it, but I really should read it again. And so this time I thought, I'm going to read it again before I talk about it on the podcast. What a crazy and novel concept, right? Um, But if you haven't read it, Let me give you a description of the book. It is, as I said, called Island of the Blue Dolphins. It is by Scott O'Dell. And it's, uh, so the, the description says, far off the coast of California looms a harsh rock known as the Island of San Nicolas. Dolphins flash in the blue waters around it, sea otter play in the vast kelp beds, and sea elephants loll on the stony beaches. 
Here, in the early 1800s, according to history, an Indian girl spent 18 years alone, and this beautifully written novel is her story. It is a romantic adventure filled with drama and heartache, for not only was mere subsistence on so desolate a spot a near miracle, but Karana had to contend with the ferocious pack of wild dogs that had killed her younger brother, constantly guard against the Aleutian sea otter hunters, and maintain a precarious food supply. More than this, it is an adventure of the spirit that will haunt the reader long after the book has been put down. Karana's quiet courage, her self-reliance, and acceptance of fate transform what to many would have been a devastating ordeal into an uplifting experience. From loneliness and terror come strength and serenity in this Newbery Medal winning classic. And um, I read, I don't remember if I read an edition that was illustrated when I read it, but the, the one that I just got from the library was beautifully illustrated and um, I really enjoyed the the pictures that were included. I remembered bits and pieces. I mean, I remembered the basic story was that she was somehow, she somehow ends up on this island alone. Um, the the, it mentions the sea otter hunters, the Aleutians, and they come to the island to hunt sea otter. And long story short, there's a, a conflict and a fight, and many of the men of the tribe are killed. It's eventually decided that they will travel elsewhere. Um, but when they are leaving the island, Karana, the main character, notices that her brother is not on the ship with them, and there's a storm coming, and the the um, the the captain won't turn around. Um, says they'll go back for him in another day, and she dives into the water after her brother because um, her mother had died several years before, and her father died in the conflict. So she goes back for her brother, and as you heard in the description, her brother is later killed by wild dogs um, not long after after this so this is a fictionalized it's historical fiction so there really was um, an island and a tribe of people who lived on that island there are accounts that they were leaving on a ship and um, one young woman did despite protests by the tribe jump from the ship and go back to the island there are accounts um from 18 years later from a different ship's log stating that they picked her up and she then was taken back to California where she lived in a mission. Unfortunately, she no one was able to understand her language and she communicated mostly in signs. I mean, she'd been alone for 18 years. So this is a real person. The book, of course, is fictionalized because, because no one could completely and fully communicate with her when she was um, finally rescued and brought to the mainland, which I feel is really unfortunate, but, um, they actually, she's actually buried, um, at the mission that she was taken to and kind of makes me want to go visit it now. So I knew that, um, she, when I read it as a kid, I knew she was, this was historical fiction. I remember being completely drawn to this book because you know, it's an adventure story, of course, and because it just seemed so amazing that this, whether it was fictionalized, whether it was fiction or historical fiction or what, the story to me was amazing because I couldn't imagine living completely alone for 18 years. Um, I was, um, I'm going to guess probably nine or 10 when I read the book, um, younger than the main character, maybe a little older than her younger brother. And I could not imagine being left to fend for myself. She, she builds herself a house and protection. She creates, she builds weapons, even though she'd never done that before. Um, she, but she just watched the men in the tribe do it. She is able to, uh, create weapons for herself so she's able to hunt and find food and there's a lot of challenges but she is amazing and this story there was that line in the description something about a, a story that will stick with you and it definitely did because years later I still remembered loving this book as a child and wanting to return to it um, as an adult reading the book I was really interested in the notes at the beginning uh, about the 
the historical figure and what is known about her, which isn't much. Also, uh, Scott O'Dell's writing and um, why he chose to wrote this, write this story, etc. This is um, probably his best loved book, according to some of the things that I've read. He, he wrote a lot of other a lot of other books, especially. Um, young adult and children's books, but this is probably his best loved. And I can definitely understand why, because it is so compelling. And the story is, I actually wish the story were a little more detailed. It is, you know, it's a, it's a children, it's a book for children. So it can't be too terribly long. Um, and to try to cover 18 years, I really felt at some points, I was like, no, I want more detail. I want more, um, you know, you kind of, skim through some of the years as things go on, but you get this amazing story of a very courageous young woman and fleshes out a a story, you know, that probably isn't completely accurate, but gives you some idea of what it might have been like for this historical figure to live completely by herself for 18 years on an island and try to survive and thrive and you know, keep herself sane because she was alone and she was trying to, she was trying to make it after, you know, her mother had died. Well, uh, according to the story, but she had no family. However, that happened. Um, and there was, there was the fact that her brother was killed by the pack of wild dogs was actually corroborated by the historical documents. So an amazing story. And I'm so glad that I went and reread it. We are going to take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about some of the other books, uh, Newbery Metal books that I read as a child. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I'm speaking today about Newberry Metal Books. And I was on the ALA website looking at the list of everything that has won since 1922. And I can definitely tell that I stopped reading Newberry books around the time of uh, high school. Um, Yeah, so I stopped reading them after about junior high. And the only one that I recognize that uh, from more recently is the tale of Despero uh, being the story of a mouse, a princess, some soup and a spool of thread by Kate DiCamillo. That was from 2004. And I haven't personally read that yet, but my parents listened to it on audiobook one year on a road trip and loved it. So I've at least heard of that one. I now have a goal to try to read as many of these as possible. Maybe not everything since 1922, but hey, maybe. We'll see how it goes. So I I was looking through and trying to see which ones I've I've actually read. Haven't, hadn't read many from the first few years or from the first few decades, I guess. Um, I've heard a few, heard of a few of them. Uh, I have read Johnny Tremaine. That was 1944 by Esther Forbes. Um, I have heard of Rabbit Hill by Robert Lawson. I think I might have tried to read that at one point, but I don't know if I finished it. Um, So a few from the 40s. Then um, The Witch of Blackbird Pond. I think I read that one. That one's from 1959 uh, by Elizabeth George Spear. Um, Island of the Blue Dolphins, 1961 by Scott O'Dell, A Wrinkle in Time. Finally read that as an adult. You already know that story. That's 1963. Let's see. 
From the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler by E. L. Konigsberg, 1968. Loved that. The High King by Lloyd Alexander, 1969. Um, Summer of the Swans by Betsy Byers, 1971. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, 1972. Julie of the Wolves by Jean Craighead George, 1973. The Slave Dancer by Paula Fox, 1974. Oh, goodness. Um, let's see. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, 1977. Bridge to Terabithia, 1978. Um, Dear Mr. Henshaw, 1984, Sarah Plain and Tall, 1986, The Whipping Boy, 1987, and that is it. That's the last, 1987. I would have been in seventh grade, so apparently I stopped reading after 1987. <laughs> Not stopped reading entirely, but so I was looking through this and reminiscing about books that I've read. I mentioned um, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim on my recent Did I Ever Read Sci-Fi podcast. There are a bunch here that I know I read and um, sort of remember, but I think I'm going to have to go revisit a bunch of them. And in that spirit, I decided I've actually been thinking about rereading The High King by Lloyd Alexander. Anyway, that is the last of his um, Prettyan series. And so I just from the library today, they came in, got the first two in that series, which is The Book of Three and The Black Cauldron. Now, uh, maybe you have read these already, or maybe you haven't. If you haven't and you're curious, you, you've also maybe seen the movie, The Black Cauldron. Disney did a movie a, a while, a while ago. It was, um, uh, it was, I, I enjoyed the movie. I don't remember, I remember thinking as a kid, wow, that was different from the book. <laughs> but what else is new, right? Um, I, I always think that. But there were things that I definitely liked about it. It turns out that The High King, which is the um, the last of the series. Well, first off, let me say that uh, I've told the story of judging the book A Wrinkle in Time by its cover. I'm pretty sure that I read this book, these books, because my brother had them. They were his books, and I had definite brother, big brother hero worship as a kid. So my brother read them and loved them, and so I decided that I need to read them. Uh, as I said, they are the Chronicles of Prydain, P-R-Y-D-A-I-N. Not sure if that is how it's pronounced exactly, but that's how I said it. And um, I I know I read the first the first two, the, the Book of Three and The Black Cauldron, but the the last one, The High King, the one that is the Newbery Medal winner, had a cover that scared the snot out of me. Uh, the High King had a mask made of um, like a skull with antlers, and it, it scared me. And so I think it took me a long time to finish the series because, <laughs> yeah, couldn't do it. Um, judged that book by its cover, but I did finally read it. I wasn't an adult when I read that, unlike A Wrinkle in Time that I just skipped altogether. Um, but it turns out also that as I was going through this, that not only is um, the High King a Newbery Medal winner, but the second book in the series, The Black Cauldron, is a Newbery Honor book. So highly recognized series with one Newbery Medal and one Newbery Honor Award to its name. Uh, I mentioned the movie, The Black Cauldron, and if I'm remembering correctly, and I'll have to see as I reread The Book of Three, I think The Black Cauldron was based more on The Book of Three. Maybe it's based on both of them, The Book of Three and The Black Cauldron, but the movie itself is called The Black Cauldron, and um, I'll have to get back to you at a later date because I just started rereading this book. So let me go ahead and give you the description of this book. I'll be reading the description of the Book of Three rather than The High King, even though I know this says Newbery Metal Books, but it makes more sense for me to give you the first book in the series rather than the fifth book in the series um, in, if you have not read them. Anywho. Uh, since the Book of Three was first published in 1964, young readers have been enthralled by the adventure of Taryn, the assistant pig keeper in his quest to become a hero. Taryn is joined by an engaging cast of characters that includes Elanwi, the strong-willed and sharp-tongued princess. 
Fluter Flam, the hyperbole prone bard, the ever faithful Gurgi, and the curmudgeonly Dolly, all of whom have become involved in an epic struggle between good and evil that shapes the fate of the legendary land of Predane. Released over a period of five years, Lloyd Alexander's beautifully written tales not only captured children's imaginations, but also garnered the highest critical praise. It goes on to say, The Black Cauldron was a Newbery honor book, and the final volume in the series, The High King, crowned the series by winning the Newbery Medal for the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children. So, um, this definitely got me interested in fantasy. Definitely uh, led to my, I don't know if I read a lot of fantasy or this type of books before this don't remember how that timeline might have played out but it's you know it's it's got your typical kind of hero's journey there's some very familiar if you're a fantasy reader but you haven't read these you're gonna recognize a lot of the elements you probably already did i mean taryn the main character is an assistant pig keeper first off the fact that he's an assistant pig keeper always made me laugh as a kid um He's not even a real, he's not even a regular pig keeper. He's, he's only an assistant pig keeper. So he's kind of your typical average, normal, not very skilled person who gets drawn into this adventure and has to find skills that he maybe never realized that he had and find courage that he didn't know he had. And as he goes through this adventure, he is joined by a colorful cast of characters who have various foibles and various gifts and skills and who are able to help him um, battle, do this battle. And of course, there's always the battle between good and evil, which is always one of my favorite themes in fantasy books when there's something that the hero has to fight. So enjoyed this book as a series, as a, as a child, excuse me, very much looking forward to reading it again as an adult. And then I may have to rewatch the movie, although I'm so far behind on not only my to be read list, but also my to be watched movie list. I haven't seen a new movie in Oof. what feels like ages so I, I don't know if I should take the time to rewatch. maybe I'll wait till I go home my nieces love this movie and um, go home to my parents my nieces love this movie and watch, will definitely watch it with me so it'll give me an excuse to uh, rewatch the movie but also hang out with my nieces win-win in my opinion at any rate that is the second um, Newberry Medal book for this podcast. We're going to take our second break of the podcast, and when we come back, we'll be wrapping this episode up. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my episode on Newberry, Newberry Metal Books. I was going through the list of not only the metal books, but also the honor books. And um, someone asked me what I was doing. And so I said, well, I'm going through this list. And they were curious, but also when they found out that I was a uh, going through a website, an American Library Association website, and that this was not my first website that I had gone through in order to just first 
do a podcast, but I would have done it anyway out of curiosity and interest. They were like, hmm, yeah, you're a nerd. <laughs> I was like, I am a book nerd. Yes, thank you very much for pointing that out. Uh, so yes, I do spend time on the American Library Association website, um, but I spend, a lot, I spend time on a lot of websites. Can't help it. At any rate, I looked uh, starting going backwards from 1987 when I apparently stopped reading Newbery books uh, to see if I had read many of the Newbery Honor books. Um, I have read a few. Uh, I was happy to see some of the Ramona books, Beverly Cleary's Ramona books, two of those on the Honor list, which I uh, I did a podcast on Ramona at one point and loved those books. And I already mentioned that the, the Black Cauldron was an Honor book and there were a couple others that I had read, um, but not many. Uh, actually, fewer honor books than metal books that I've read. So I'll have to decide if I'm going to make this my goal of how long the goal will be, of how long I will take to read my, or to, you know, go through the list. Am I going to read everything from 1922 on? Am I going to read everything from 1922 on, including metal and honor? I don't know. What do you think? I would love to know how many you have read, which ones are your favorites. Have you read them all? Have you made it a goal to read every year when the new one comes out? I'd love to hear it. At any rate, I do want to talk about one more Newbery Medal book, and that is Sarah Plain and Tall by Patricia McLaughlin. It, it's It's got my name in it, so that, that drew me to the book immediately. Actually, I think my dad read it when it came out, as, or when it won the Newbery Medal and said, here, you need to read it too. This was again in the 80s, so I would have been, I think it was later 80s that I read it because I remember being mm, maybe sixth grade or something, you know, right before I stopped reading them. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, so this beloved Newbery Medal winning book is the first of five books in Patricia McLaughlin's chapter book series about the Whitting family. Set in the late 19th century and told from young Anna's point of view, Sarah Plain and Tall tells the story of how Sarah Elizabeth Wheaton comes from Maine to the prairie to answer Papa's advertisement for a wife and mother. Before Sarah arrives, Anna and her younger brother Caleb wait and wonder, will Sarah be nice? Will she sing? Will she stay? This children's literature classic is perfect for fans of Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House on the Prairie books, historical fiction, and timeless stories using rich and beautiful language. Sarah Plain and Tall gently explores themes of abandonment, loss, and love. Um, then the rest of the books, but of the Sarah books by Patricia McLaughlin are Skylark, Caleb's Story, More Perfect Than the Moon, and Grandfather's Dance. Now, I have not read any of the other four. I um, it turns out that they made a movie out of this starring um, Christopher Walken, of all people, as as Papa. And he's actually quite good. I mean, I like Christopher Walken in a lot of ways, and he's not always the strange, creepy dude. Um, but Christopher Walken and Glenn Close as Sarah. And there is a second movie called Skylark. There is also a third movie I cannot at the moment think of what it's called, but if um, Christopher Walken isn't a strange enough choice as the as Papa, his father is played by, oh no, now I can't think of his name. Give me a second, it'll come to me. Um, Jack Palance, yes, who also plays some really interesting characters, so uh, that that's an interesting father-son combination. And that third movie is called Winter's End, which isn't one of those. So Skylark was the second book and the second movie, but Winter's End was not mentioned. And I can't tell you if Skylark is um, very true to the second book because I haven't read it, but I have seen the movie and I have absolutely no idea how Winter's End fits in with the series itself, if it does at all, or if it's a completely different um screenplay just written by someone who wanted to continue the story but didn't want to follow up with the books. Anyway, I enjoyed this book not only because it had my name in the title and I admit to being, you know, I can be a little narcissistic sometimes when it comes to my name, but also because I, as I've said, I, I loved the Little House books and I liked historical fiction, still do, and enjoyed reading this um, because I Growing up in Montana, I was more familiar with um, the 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 perspective of the children who were growing up on the prairie and not 
from Sarah coming from Maine. I'd never been to Maine. I'd never been to the East Coast. And so having read the Little House books and also growing up in Montana, that was a lot more known to me. So having Sarah come into their, their lives, I was as fascinated as the children, Anna and Caleb, were to have her come in. But then also this whole process of putting out an advertisement for a wife and a mother, you know, after his wife and the children's mother had died, he needed someone to help because they, he was running a farm and trying to raise children. And that just was so strange to me to read this book and to realize that this wasn't that uncommon and to see how it might work and uh, wonder what those situations might have been like. So I, I learned a lot about that and really enjoyed the book itself then um actually enjoyed the movies as well so i i can comment on a couple movies that since i saw them a million years ago as opposed to having seen no movies in the recent past <laughs> but hey i'm still reading i i got that going for me at any rate um i I'm going to wrap this episode up. I would love to hear from you which Newbery Medal and Honor books you have read. Which ones are your favorites? Um, do you make it a habit of reading them every year or do you have children and you read them together? Whatever that is, I would love to hear about your experiences. You can hit me up on social media and let me know all about it. I would like to thank you for joining me and invite you to join me for Tuesday's episode. I have um, actually a young author joining me. Uh, he is 17, Trayvon Toussaint, and we're going to be talking about his new young adult sci-fi book called Disconnected. So join me for that interview on Tuesday. In the meantime, have a great weekend and go out and get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.